This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 90 of Horsemanship Radio, brought to you by Omega Fields, the world's best omega-3 supplements for horses. Horsemanship Radio is a part of the family of the Horse Radio Network, and today we have some fun with several amazing horsemen who are giving their time and talents to create the first global edition of Sunset Polo for charity. It's like a Gatsby party. And Nick Roldan's UK Sunset Polo will take place at the ancestral home of British Polo, which is the Cowdray House in West Sussex. And we have Monty Roberts, world-renowned natural horseman, and he'll give a horse sense and healing demonstration while the Olympic gold medalist Nick Skelton will make his polo debut <laughs> alongside U.S. number one polo player Nick Roldan in what is 2017's hottest equestrian ticket. And flash, newsflash, they just asked also William Fox Pitt to be a part of this, and we're announcing that here, and it's all happening Tuesday, June the 20th, 2017, from 5 to 11 p.m. Get your Gatsby on. This is Debbie Laux, and you're listening to the Horsemanship Radio. Thanks for joining us. Horsemanship Radio airs on the 1st and the 15th of the month. And on the line I have with us, uh, top American polo player and Brook USA ambassador, Nick Roldan, and also famed horse trainer, Monty Roberts, hi dad, who changed the trajectory of horse training forever with his autobiography, The Man Who Listens to Horses, and his concepts of violence-free join-up. And we'll get with them right after this from our title sponsor, Omega Fields. Your horse is your partner in sport, in leisure, and just in life. To keep him at his peak performance and optimal health, a solid nutritional foundation is key. Ideally, horses are able to graze fresh, growing grasses, which most closely mimic their natural diet. But that may not always be possible. And we may need to supply some of those missing ingredients in today's diets and provide more functional foods. One component of a horse's diet that is often underfed are omega-3 fatty acids. While more prevalent in fresh forages, harvested forages are lower in omega-3 fatty acids due to their more advanced maturity. Obviously, grasses and legumes have to grow to a sufficient height in order to be harvested, while foraging patterns of horses show great preference for shorter, less mature plants. That's why modern horsemen and horsewomen trust Omega Horse Shine to provide a powerful, bountiful source of omega-3 fatty acids for their equine partners. Look for Omega Horse Shine from Omega Fields at your local tack and feed supplier, or you can find them online at omegafields.com. This is Debbie from Horsemanship Radio, and I just wanted to say that we've got Jonathan Russell, who's the CEO of Cowdray Estate, on the line, and we've got Nick Roll down, of course, and Monty Roberts. And uh, we'd love to hear, um, Nick, you start us off about what this event means to, uh, to Polo, and uh, we'd love to hear from Jonathan about a little bit about Cowdray House. Take it away. Yeah, I've been working with, uh, with Brooke, um, which, is a, which is one of the largest equine welfare organizations for about two years now. And, um, you know, with, with the help of my team, we, we started brainstorming ideas of where we could do other events. And, um, you know, I've been spending quite a bit of time in England. And, um, you know, we were very fortunate to get to know uh, Jonathan and the rest of the Cowdery team. And we thought it would be a perfect location to host another one of the, uh, a new edition of the Nick Roll Band Sunset Polos event. So, um, you know, Jonathan and his team were overly generous and uh, Lord and Lady Cowdery as well. Um, to to let us do uh, a, you know a charity event here, and um, you know I think uh, you know we're very lucky and blessed that we can do it in such a beautiful area. Um, you know historically, Cowdery um, has hosted polo and has been in the polo in the polo industry in the polo world for you know a very long time, and um, I thought it was a perfect location. And obviously, with the help of with Brooke and uh, with the help of Monty and all their supporters. Um, we're getting this event off the ground. So, um, you know, like I said, Jonathan, you know, we're very thankful and uh, we think it's going to be a great event. 
and um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can bring a little bit of the sunshine. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, hopefully we can get this rain, this rainy weather out of the way. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, we're we're really excited, and um, and I, I don't think there's a better place and a better stomping ground to uh, to to host the first event. But this is Monty Roberts and uh, Jonathan. I'm I'm anxious to hear more about Cowdery House too. I've been all over your country, as you know, and and uh, yet I can't remember ever being actually at Cowdery House. But I do know that three weeks from now, or three and a half weeks from now, when I arrive in England for this event, you'll probably have a hosepipe ban, and it'll be. 90 degrees so <laughs> well but monty we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we arrange all of that for you it's okay, uh, it's, it's it's a, it's a, it's it's a great honor for us to, to to have you and to have nick and and all the team we um uh just a, a little background to to cowdery we we're uh we, we're, we're a fairly traditional estate in in the south of england uh, we, we've been here for many, many generations of the of the Cowdery family, uh, and, and I have the great privilege of, of working directly for uh, Lord Michael and Lady Marina Cowdery, who, who are the current uh, um, generation who own the estate. We, um, uh, we, 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 we do all sorts of things at Cowdery. Uh, we... Um, uh, we, we are fairly traditional in terms of our uh, land-based interests, be that farming and, and be that forestry interests. But, but over the years, we, we, we've diversified and we've become uh, a much more customer-facing business, really focused on leisure and hospitality. So we, we, have, uh, we have retail, we have golf clubs, we have a, a little hotel, we have farm shop and cafe and, and, and all sorts of things uh, across the estate. Um, in, in respect of Cowdery House, uh, Cowdery House was, was Michael and Marina's home uh, up until 2011 when uh, they, they wanted to downsize. And, and, and when you see the house, you, you, you'll understand why they wanted to downsize. Um, and um, the, the, the house then, then, then fell out empty. And, and since then, we've... Um, created a really an exclusive destination from the house it's it's got 21 bedrooms in it uh it, it's fully staffed with with chefs and butlers and 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 we uh we, we have the great privilege of being able to host all sorts of functions from from weddings through to private events through to overseas travelers coming and and being based uh, at the house um we we were then absolutely delighted that that nick and his team approached us um last year with the idea of, of um, staging a UK version of his Sunset Polo event. Uh, and, and that's going to be held on, on the house ground, which is right in front of, of Cowdery House uh, on the 20th of June, which is, which is very exciting. Polo has really been synonymous with with Cowdery for uh, for, for many many years. We, we 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 call ourselves the the home of British polo, and um and and really that that that's probably more true after the the, the Second World War when uh, Michael's Michael's father, John Cowdery. Um, imported 50 ponies from Argentina and, and really re-established polo in the country after it had pretty much died out during, during the Second World War. Uh, and, and really, the, the, the polo all started on, 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 on the famous house ground, which is where Nick event, Nick's event is, is going to take place. So it, it's, it's, it's really fitting and, uh, and, and really appropriate that, that, that that's where we can host it, uh, yeah. with, with the house right behind the, 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 the house ground. It's, it's just going gonna, gonna to be a great backdrop and a great evening yes it oh, sounds super like. mm -hmm. it'll just be a privilege to be there and be a part of english history once more um this lady of yours has had me visiting a lot of english history for the last 28 years and uh somehow this one has slipped away but i i have been quite active in in the polo area and certainly the brook is deserving of the best we can do for the work that they're doing for Equids globally. You know, it's it's really a, a great cause. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I would entirely agree. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and, I agree as well. I mean, it's, it's very fitting. Um, and Monty, you'll, you'll see when when you when you arrive to the 
to, to the estate. I mean, it, it's really, it's spectacular. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, like Jonathan was saying, the tradition and the history that it has, um, you know, it, it really does fit, uh, fit, fit, fit this event perfectly. And, and, and having Brooke uh, there as well is obviously, um, you know, a huge addition. And, 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 and uh, yeah, I think everyone's very excited. And, uh, you know, I think it's something that's fairly new for, for the town. Um, that's something very interesting, and I think we're going to get a lot of support. Good. Uh, so, so right, you yeah. you hosted Jonathan the uh, Gold Cup for the British Open. There is that is that one of the most important tournaments. Yeah. So the the the, the Gold Cup was was created uh, by by Michael's father, John Cowdery, um, mm. uh, and it, it te- technically it is the British Open, which is and and you are playing for the Gold Cup. Mm. So so that is. Um, uh, that that has taken place at Calgary for for many many years. It's 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 clearly the the, the high point of the uh, of the season's calendar. Mm-hmm. We 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 play something like 500 polo matches at Calgary during the season, oh, uh, right. uh, and um, we we were delighted to be able to cheer Nick all the way through to the final last year. Uh, so so we so well we. We yeah, yeah. I, so so we're, we're we're all kind of rooting for you to get, to go one better this year, Nick. All right, uh, I, got, know, I know, I know, cheerleaders. I, indeed, I am as well. <laughs> I am as Fantastic. well, and uh, and I and I, I do have the best cheerleaders. Jonathan uh, being one of them. Uh, I, got I got I have I have pom poms for you this year, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's, look, I mean, it. I like I've I mean it. It's definitely, I have to say, and I've, you know, I've played, I've been very lucky to play polo around the world and, and on five different continents. And, uh, I have to say, you know, playing polo in Calgary and, uh, especially playing on Lawns One, um, you know, during the Gold Cup is definitely one of the most beautiful and, uh, and uh, most beautiful scenery in the world. So, um, excited to be back and excited to be doing this event and glad to, Glad to have your support, obviously, Jonathan and Monty. Always good, always good to have you as well. So, well, thank you. Is it is it Lord Michael that lost an arm and played with the uh, artificial arm? No, Monty, that, that that was his father, Lord Lord John Cowdery, who okay. who who lost his arm on the beaches of Dunkirk. Um, yeah, uh, and th- and then was heard to say loudly that thank goodness he didn't have to play golf anymore. Um, <laughs> 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 Uh, and, and then and then had his had his uh, had his gunmaker make him this this uh, wooden prosthetic arm with a hook on the end, and 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 he carried on playing polo right right through until his late days. Do you still have the arm? Uh, we do still have the arm. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, that sounds a bit creepy, but yeah, we we, yeah. we very much so. <laughs> that's true, British. Wow, that's Carry on. Huh? That's, it. That's, it. that's stay amazing. calm and carry on that's it yeah, I yeah. love it well Jonathan thank you so much for uh, stepping in pleasure. here today and giving us a little background on Cadre Estates I'm sure we're all more excited now having you that's, on that's great Debbie thank you uh, so Not guys rendered. so far we have Tim Hawkswood um, now but Tim yeah, I have a I have a question this is Debbie from Horsemanship Radio I have a question for you Tim I saw on William Fox Pitt's Hi, um, website this beautiful Jeep that he was driving on, this uh, this uh, video that they have on his website. But behind it, now listen okay. closely, Nick, there's this huge, I guess you would call it a lorry for his horses. And it has, oh, it's right. brown, uh, it has a Jeep across yeah. it. Yeah. I'm wondering, how do you get it one is, of those? <laughs> um, I think you have to ride very much like <laughs> William Fox to see oh. one of those. So, uh, <laughs> I've, I've been practicing. I've been practicing a long time, but I'm not quite getting them myself yet. But it is, it is a beautiful, beautiful unit. So, um, and I, I know William actually loves it to pieces. So I've seen him in the interview before, where, uh, and all his luxury items. That's one of the things that he uh, he he, eats, uh, he appreciates most. So it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I mean, I know he has four kids and he's six five, but that thing looked big enough for all of them. You think? Absolutely right. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a very impressive piece of kit. So. When he's uh, when he's at the shows, uh, I think there's quite a few admirers for it. So uh, and it's and it's obviously a great, it's a great, uh, it's a great vision for for Jeep as well. So it's a it's a really yeah. good PR unit. That's beautiful. So uh, so Nick, tell us a little bit. Uh, William is going to be at the June 20th event. Is that right? Yeah, William. Yeah, William is one of the celebrity um, one of the celebrity uh, equestrian athletes that's going to be competing with us. 
mm-hmm. and um, you know, and uh, well, like I, you know, like I said, I, I started, um, I built a relationship with Tim and Jeep last year, and we had a great time, and you know, then it, it sort of carried on to 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 other things, and one of the things was getting to know when Fox did, and maybe doing uh, um, a career, uh, you know, a change of a, a yeah. job change for the day, um, <laughs> which is something we've still been trying to get to do, but we haven't done it yet, but. Um, you know, long story short, uh, William was very um, supportive and, and wanted and, you know, was excited about uh, competing in the event with us on June 20th. And Tim yeah. helped us uh, arrange that. And, um, you know, we're very lucky. You know, Jeeps uh, is a great brand and they're, you know, they're huge supporters of the equestrian sports. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very excited to be working with him. And uh, Tim's a great guy. And you know, you've done a lot for us, Tim. And we're very thankful for that, though. So. Thank you for that, well, Tim. Man, it has so, been a great association. It's been quite a short one, really. Um, it's been a great one. Yeah. And and are you going to actually have uh, William up playing polo? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the plan is we're going to have William Fox did competing. Um, and um, another one of the one of the riders is a, is a gentleman, in, or is Nick Skelton, who won gold medal in, uh, mm-hmm. in the Olympics. And um, and then I think we have uh, and then we had a couple of other guys as well. So um, I think it's it's you know it, it's going to be exciting and uh, and interesting at the same time. Yeah, no kidding. And so and William Fox Pitt is six five, as I recall. He's he's a big tall guy. You know, I I didn't yeah. realize that. <laughs> wow. Do you have a polo <laughs> pony for that? He's very tall. Yeah. He, yeah, I'm gonna have to find one. I think I've got one for him. I'll, I, I like big horses, so I've got one for him. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. I love the job yeah. swap uh, idea, Tim. Yeah, Tim, the job was, swap was it? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, was that your idea, Tim, or was yeah, that Nick? Was, so you're gonna give that over to Nick. Yeah. You know, it Tim, and to and to Natasha. Uh, it was uh, Natasha, yeah. last year. We tried to do it last year, and obviously with the Olympics coming through, it was a really great time to do it last year, but. Unfortunately, with uh, Nick Starry and William Starry, it didn't quite it didn't quite work out last year. But I think mean, the, the the concept was a great idea, and uh, everyone's very excited for it. So uh, we're keen to be able to do it this year, and, and, and the actual event on the twentieth is, is a really great uh, a great arena to do it in as well. So it's a beautiful mm-hmm. beautiful grounds as we know. Uh, so a really good uh, a really good venue for it. Excellent, yeah. Tim, Tim. You know, Tim, little, you know, little, Tim. Little, little do you know that. Yeah. Sorry. Well, Tim, last week I had. The U.S. Olympic Association here, uh, sorry, Polo Association here, and um, they they've come up with, and I have a meeting next week, and I'll be coming over there to you guys about this because I have a way to make polo a whole lot more popular with the people on the street and buying tickets to go to the games and stuff, um, and it has to do with the assistance of the polo associations, various ones all over the world, um, coming through to assist veterans in a system that I use to bring trust back to the veterans that are suffering from post-traumatic stress. And uh, we're going to be talking okay. about that over there, and you might be interested in it because I think it's it's going to be a, a big asset to polo. Fantastic. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's a great, great that's a good, uh, good initiative. Well, thank you. And tell me, that's a great initiative. So, yeah, absolutely. If you if you can let me know what, what's happening on that, uh, Monty, be great to you. I will do that. Yeah. I mean, we didn't see we didn't see you at Royal Windsor last week, um, Monty. You weren't over for that, no. No, I was in Hungary. <laughs> and uh, oh wow, I had so, yeah. I had a booked cool. event over there, but um, <clears throat> I yeah. understand you had a good show there. It was a bit shy, and, uh, and Nick Skelton, as we mentioned earlier, Nick used that as his uh, his place to officially retire him, and uh, and he's and he's uh, he's he's forced victorious from the Olympics. So uh, it was quite an emotional day on the Sunday. It was. It was adorable. Yeah. the The Queen was um, giggling over the antics that um, that Nick's horse was having. I we saw all the photos over here, and it's, yeah. it was looked like a really fun event. Yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. The whole, uh, yeah, the whole did, look at those before retirement, did it? Mm. Did Whitaker do any good? 
Yeah, Whitaker actually, I think, what got third, uh, he was second or third place in, in one of the Grand Prix on, uh, I think, maybe on Friday night or okay. Saturday. Mm, yeah, great. So, Very good. Um, I, I, I actually was lucky. I got to go over there as well. My girlfriend was showing um, okay. on fr- on Saturday night, actually, she, and on Saturday, and um, and um, she actually won the, the the Grand Prix Saturday night, which was was really fun to watch. Oh, fantastic! Uh, but, but, yeah. She now won, we great, now we yeah. know what's taken you back to England all these times. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> but I have to say, I I I, 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 I like that. Yeah, so okay, I saw her win on the Saturday night, so she was, uh, yeah, she, she rode really well. So. Ah, that's great. Yeah, she did really well, so, yeah, it was a good weekend. <sighs> Excellent. Well, Tim, thanks for joining us today. It was really fun. To, we're, we're having fun talking oh, about the whole event coming up, so we'll hope to uh, see you out there, and uh, everybody's going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so, yeah. so Jeep are very happy to be uh, to be supporting the IMAT, so uh, and so it really fit to score very well. Uh, obviously, being an American brand, it fits uh, obviously it fits with Nick very well. And uh, and then Natasha asked us if we'd support it, and, and if you know mm-hmm. Natasha, you definitely say no, sir. So uh, we were uh, we were very keen and fully supported behind it. So uh, so uh, so very pleased to be involved, and looking forward to the day itself, and just hoping the weather uh, in our in our British star can can hold out for a really really nice day for it. Cause I think there's lots of uh, lots of good stuff going on, and looks really interesting. It's uh, it looks an exciting day, and uh, really pleased to be involved. Thank you. Well, we're Great thank you, to Tim. have you. Yep, thank you. All right, see you the twentieth. All right. Well, we're we're bringing on our, onto Tom Morley Hello. now and see if we can get through. Is that Tom? Yes, it is. How are you doing? Hi, Tom. Hey, this hey, is Paul. Debbie. This is Nick. You've got Nick on the line, and Nick Roldan, and you've got Monty Roberts on the line. And this is Tom. He's also on the English squad, uh, a well-known horse trainer. And um, take it away, Nick. Hey, Tom, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Nick, how are you doing? Very well. How are you doing, Moles? Mate, very, uh, very, very good weather here in England, as usual. Yeah. yeah are, you try, are, you, are, you, are you staying dry? Uh, just, I've just come in. I was uh, just out on some horses earlier and got a little bit of a uh, soak, and now I'm, uh, now I'm just dried off and uh, having a little relax in the afternoon. Nice. Ah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Well... Um, you, you're, Monty's on the phone with me, and we're uh, we're excited to have you on the phone, and um, we're also I'm very excited to have you uh, competing in, in the in our event on June 20th. So, um, uh, yeah, just don't just don't. Yeah. One thing I ask is that you don't beat me. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom, it, Tom, it's good don't to be on with bad. you. Tom, hi, it's good hi, to be hi, on hi. with you. Hi, and uh, I understand we're going to have some very green grass. When we get there, yeah, the, the grass will be green. It's uh, I'm really excited to be playing in the event. You know, competing against Nick will be great. I'm gonna try my hardest to beat him, but obviously, as you guys all know, he's a, he's a very good player. Yeah, um, and he's got he's got some great teammates with uh, Claire Milford Haven, who's one of the the better lady players in the country. So he's gonna be um, he's gonna be flying. So it'll take everything I've got, yeah. but I'll give it I'll give it as much as I can. Yeah, and the cowdry the cowdry experience is something else too, eh? Oh no, it's exceptional. I mean, the house is beautiful. The surroundings are amazing. Um, if you're into polo, it's the, it's one of the best places in the world to play polo. Um, you know, it's the home of English polo. Uh, great backdrop. It's um, yeah, a really exciting place to be. Oh, great. Well, I yeah, hope we have awesome. some good news for you about my plans to make polo more important in the world to the people on the streets. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, next thing. Sorry, oh, that, Nick's been funny. telling me about it, Monty, and it uh, sounds awesome. Sounds very exciting. Mm. Yeah, it um, it's a funny idea. I don't know why it took me so long to think about it, but um, our veterans really need the help of horses to bring their trust back, and I've discovered a way to do that, and polo ponies are the perfect answer, and uh, they have uh, quite little to do uh, between matches, so... Uh, we're going to solicit their assistance globally. I think that Monty, I think that's a great I think that's a great way to um, to create awareness in the polo world. Um, 
you know, and I think, uh, I think you really, I mean, if you can, if you can, if you can get all of the, the, the associations, the HPA, the USPA, the Argentine Association, and any other associations around the world together um, to support that, I think you really have something great and uh, something that could be really successful to promote polo. Yeah, and the, and the person on the street um, couldn't be happier with anybody that's helping veterans right now. So right. that's exactly. a very popular thing to do. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, well, I, I agree. Well, well, Tom's one of the one of the biggest, um, you know, one of the one of the biggest polo players in England, and one of the, and a huge supporter of polo, and has been around for a long time, and a and a great captain. So, um, you know, obviously having him on board, I thought it was well. Apart from he's been one of my close friends for a long time, it was uh, I thought it was fun and, and and important to have him as be a part of this uh, this event, and uh, and he's a huge supporter and a great uh, face for the English polo. So. Um, well, thank you. you know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an a, a, a action-packed day of, of all the equestrian uh, yeah. uh, disciplines. So it should be fun. Yeah, you've really put a lineup together, and um, it, it, the inaugural of anything must be really complicated. But I can't believe how ambitious you are, and and uh, and to have this aid not only the Brook uh, Charity, which is an animal uh, charity, but also the Chestnut Tree. House Children's House. Chestnut Tree House, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, did you go yeah, visit actually, them uh, today? I did. I did this morning. Um, um, I, we were very lucky to get a, a, a tour of, of, of the facility, and um, and I got to meet some of the kids, which was really great. Um, you know, it's it's, it's, it's heart wrenching, but um, but you know, it's good. It's great to know that there are places like Chestnut Tree House out there that that help and support and um, and um, can play. Like, you know, give these kids some, some sort of a, um, a life of normality, um, Mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in their struggles. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a charity that's very close to Lauren Lady Cowdery. And, um, you know, I thought that was really important, um, for both myself and my team to do, to support, um, some of the local causes and, um, and, uh, this being that it's the first, you know, event in this area. Um, I didn't want I didn't want anyone to be left out, and I wanted mm-hmm. everyone to be included. And um, I thought it was only, you know, it was it was special for Chestnut Tree House to be part of it. So, um, you know, and we're excited. We you know we're, the idea is to try to create as much awareness and try to promote, and um, you know, all of the hard work that Brooke does, and to also create as much awareness for um, and, and that for Chestnut Tree House. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're really pulling yeah. the community get together. That's really nice. But I, I like what you're doing for the image and the um, I, presence, I guess, is a, probably a better way to say it, of polo in people's lives. It's not been that way, you know, tw- 20, 30 years ago. I remember it more, feeling more elite. And now I feel like it's really approachable by the public. Yeah. Do you feel? Yeah. yeah? I mean, like that. In, 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 you know, in the end, that is my main goal is to try to promote, um, you know, is, you know, I'm very passionate about the sport of polo, obviously, you know, polo has been in my family for, for many generations. So, um, you know, is, is trying to create awareness, trying to promote the sport in, in a good way um, and trying to combine, uh, uh, you know, um, charities with, with the sport um, and to try to bring a little bit of good and, and show a, a, gr- a greater side and a different side of polo and not, not only that elite side. So, um, yeah. you know, events like this, um, mm-hmm. you know, I think do that. And we've had a lot of success in Florida and in Palm Beach. And, um, you know, this is obviously very new ground for us, but um, we feel confident, we're excited, and, and hopefully and we have a lot of support from the town and from Calgary House and from a lot of the sponsors and Jeep. And uh, so uh, we're excited. We're really excited to launch this and to get it off the ground. Yeah. And not only that, but you have a lot of support cross discipline. Now this is where you yeah. really excel, Nick. I mean, you've got, you've got Nick Skelton 
That's a top yeah. British show jumper. He, um, people might know his story that he overcame a, basically a career-ending neck injury. Um, and he came back and he won the Olympic gold in London in 2012. And as we just said, he recently retired, he and his horse, but not before becoming the BBC Sports Personality of the Year. And he's just he is just such a great ambassador for the sport of British show jumping and show jumping in worldwide. But uh, show jumping is pretty different than polo. And then you've got yeah. the uh, eventing that we talked about, William Fox Pitt. And uh, yeah, those guys. The, yeah. Look, I, I, I have, I mean, I'm very lucky. I have huge supporters. Um, you know, Monty, you know, first and foremost, um, you know, I think there, there isn't a, there isn't a, a guy in, in, in the equestrian world that does more and supports more and does more for equines um, than yourself, Monty. And, and um, you know, far beyond anything, you know, it's an honor to have you. Um, and I know a lot of, you know, I know you put a lot of hard work in, into what you do and to, into the brook and everything. So I think it was only, um, you know, it's a perfect fit. And, um, but yeah, you know, we've got Nick Skelton, we've got Charlotte Desjardins, we've got uh, William Fox, but, you know, we've got a, a you know, a lot of the leading guys uh, or a lot of leading athletes in their in their equine disciplines. And um, I think it's tough. I think it's tough sometimes to to get everyone together, but because everyone's sort of stuck in their own world and in their own uh, sport. And uh, this, I think it's just a great opportunity to get everyone together and supporting some great causes and raising money and creating awareness. So. Well, thank you for all the compliments, but you know that I'm doing what I love to do, and so you don't have to work. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right? This is this isn't work for us. I mean, I feel the same way. This isn't, you know, for me, it's it's not work. It's passion. It's enjoy. It's it's, it's something I love to do. So, um, you obviously feel the same way, Monty. So it's great. It's yeah. great to be able to do this and to share to share this experience and this uh, this ride with you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it might be fun to run through the event agendas too. So you've got uh, the Cowdery House we've we've named. It's uh, in Midhurst in West Sussex, England, and it opens at five p.m. And then you've got the equestrians coming in to do their demonstrations. You've got dressage to music, and you've got Dad Monty Roberts. Uh, working with a veteran in the round pen. Dad, do you want to describe a little bit about that without giving it all away, of course? Well, yeah, I'm on to this thing that I've discovered about how horses can bring trust back to those who are suffering from post-traumatic stress. And that's not just veterans, but first responders and others. And um, when you have post-traumatic stress, you do lose your confidence and your trust in others. And horses can bring it back, and I'm proving it every day. <clears throat> they have some empirical studies going on uh, to show that it's about 86% that Mark uh, significantly imp improved after three days with my clinics. And um, as partners of mine, the polo world has the perfect horses standing all over it um, to bring to those fellows. And when the polo people bring their horses, they also bring a place to do it. Um, we, we, we can't just stay here in California doing this over and over again. Um, we've got to get to Florida and, and Virginia and Chicago and, and England and so forth and so on. Australia is big Canada as well. Yeah. Um, so I've got to I've got to train teams to do the psychological things that I do in the venues that'll work for them. Which polo is just loaded with the uh, answers to that question. Yeah, no, I agree. And what does that mean exactly? That polo is loaded. You've got the horses mentioned that they're they're ideally well, suited. Yeah, I mean, each time you have a polo field, you have stables and you have mm. probably a, a meeting hall of some kind. Mm -hmm. And those can be used for these clinics without any alterations. Mm -hmm. So um, all over this globe of ours, we have places that we can do this 
treatment of uh, post-traumatic stress to the people that we owe it to more than maybe any other group on earth. Ah, oh, we've we're getting Tammy Graves on the line. I think is Tammy okay. there? She is indeed. Hang on one second. I'll pass you Thank over to you her. Thank you very much. Great. Sorry to interrupt, Dad. Tammy, is that, hi. Is that you, Tammy hello. Graves? It is. Yes. This is Monty Roberts speaking to you. Oh, hello. Nice to speak to you. And we've got Nick, Rold, and Rold, Nick on here with you too. Nick, Nick is on, and hi, Tammy. Gabby Laux is on. Yes. Hi, Tammy. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hi, thanks for joining us. That's okay, no problem. Uh, Are you getting wet? Um, No, actually, I've been quite lucky today. The weather's been all right. Just a tiny bit of drizzle right now, so it's not too bad. All right. Well, are you ready to slide on the polo field? (laughs) Ready to do something on the polo field, not short of sliding. Do some spinning, I think. (laughs) Do some spinning. Uh, You'll punch some holes in it. Oh, gosh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> we're, 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 all, we're all really excited to to have you, Tammy, and we're excited to see the the sort of di- the sort of display that you're going to put on. Um, you know, it's a, it's a it's an action packed day, and uh, we're looking forward to it. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Hoping my horses will conform nicely. That'd be good. Have you have you ever done any kind of demonstrations on a polo field, Tammy? Not on a polo field. I did one um, at Blenheim last year. So that was kind of the grassy terrain there. That worked out okay. So should be good, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll get so, something done. It'll be fun and for a good cause. Yeah, very good cause. Yeah, yeah. We're That's it. it Tammy. Ta- Tammy, where where are you based? I'm uh, based in the New Forest, uh, just on the edge of the forest, a little town called Bashley. Oh, okay. Oh great! Uh, okay, beautiful. And t- wh- why don't you tell us a little bit about what what you what you do and what um, you you guys use quarter horses, correct? Yes. Yeah, I train and work with quarter horses mainly. Yeah. That's correct. Okay, so great. I have is a. That, is that is this fairly new here in England, or is it? Uh, you've been doing this for quite a while. Um, no, it's been around in England for quite a while. It's an ever-growing sport. It's a lot smaller over here than it is, obviously, in America and um, in places like Germany and Italy. But it's it's growing over here. The the reigning side is probably the most popular side at the moment. Oh, good. Great, great, great. Well, I know I'm very excited, and I know Monty is very excited to see it. And so, um, you know, we're, we're, we're thankful for, for you being able to support this this event. So... It should be good. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you're a trooper. Yeah. So, Tammy, tell me, tell me, in the Western reigning over there, uh, who do you who do you aspire to be more like? Is it is it really the Western world? Or are you starting to look to Germany and Italy, who are winning so many world championships over there? Oh, I don't know. That's a tough one. I, I think when yeah. I was younger, it was a lot of the American riders. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, with getting over there and training, I've done a lot of training in Belgium and Germany in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah, just aspiring you, to be at the top. One of my uh, good friends rides for Belgium, so I go and train with her quite a bit when I have some free time. Yeah, they have good footing, and they're all set up over there anymore, yeah? Yeah, so it's good. It's nice over there. They have lovely facilities. You can go and play around it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Tammy, you know you're going to be supporting a good cause. You've got Brooke Animal Charity that started in England. Um, yeah. It goes all over the world. And then also um, there's the local by Cowdery House. There's the uh, the children's hospice. So um, it, was that m- your biggest motivation? Or is it that just Nick w- said, please come, and you just dropped everything? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a bit of both. I'm, I'm really honored to be asked anyway um, and because it's for such a, a great cause. Yeah. Um, and I just think it'd be really awesome to go and ride there. So I'm just really excited all over, really. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, how often do you think a, a, a little girl with a rainer gets to go to Cowdery House, yeah? Not very often at all. So I was like, <laughs> yes, I'm doing it. <laughs> Good girl, yeah. I'm glad you're brave. And, and, and you do a lot of showing, I assume. You're competing all the time. So this is not going to be nerve-wracking or anything, right? Mm, I'm not going to go that far. I think <laughs> it seemed like an awesome idea at the time. And then I thought about it and I thought, oh, gosh, uh, okay. I need to, need to put my head down. But no, I do a lot of competitions. I used to ride on Team GB was part of the reigning team for lots of years, and I also used to ride on the uh, British youth team for the American Court Horse stuff. So, yeah. doing it for a while. 
Good. We, yeah, we've, we've sent some quarter horses over there. We have good friends that have some of our willing partners horses over there. And, uh, and I know that the quarter horse is becoming a, a, a more attractive breed over there, which is really fun. But do you import most of your quarter horses or do you, are you starting to grow them there? Um, a bit of both, to be honest. I, I'm probably going to say most of my top horses have come from abroad at various mm-hmm. points in time when I've been um, training. I've also bred a few here, um, and there's lots of people that are slowly getting into breeding them this side as well. Great. So, great. Yeah, yeah, ever growing. Yeah, good. Well, we'll follow your your competitive life, but um, Monty will be happy to meet you uh, June 20th over there. Yeah. I certainly will. Yeah. I yeah. certainly will. <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks for joining us today, Tammy. I appreciate it. Sorry we got you off a horse or off a lesson, but um, we wanted to hear that your that voice. That's fine. <laughs> good, no problem good. at all. Hi, is that Graham or is that Jonathan? This Graham Square, and uh, you are head chef at the Lickfold <laughs> Inn. Am I right? Yes, uh, Lickfold Inn, the Bethlehem. All right, I have got Nick Roll down on the phone with you hey. and Monty Roberts. Say hi. Hey. Hello, hey, Graham. Graham. How are you? Hi, not too bad. Thanks, yourself. Oh, Graham. Graham, we've got hungry people on the line who just are acquiring <laughs> minds that want to know. We we are we've just been extolling the virtues of you guys who have donated an entire formal dinner, and we were talking about food, and we just got really hungry, and we're dying to know what's on the menu, or is it a top secret for June twentieth? No, no, we've got we've got open about what we do here. Um, that and we have two. In, in, in the little room, we have two different kind of styles. We have one upstairs, we have like the fine dining restaurant, which we always at restaurant, which we always strive to better ourselves. And um, we have uh, just the, the kind of the um, signature dishes. We have a gene cured salmon um, with cucumber, seaweed, and dill. Uh, off the main course, we have a roast halibut with cauliflower yeast and slow. Oh my gosh. And on one of the points, we, we do a classic souffle, which is still we do it with uh, black cherry and uh, pine sorbet. And okay. downstairs we have the kind of relaxed bar area, which is similar to tapas, um, but all British. And when people say tapas, they get kind of negative connotations about it being small plates, very expensive. Um, but this is just uh, a way of people being able to um, have their own experience and have not have to commit to a, a large, you know, a kind of and go to the, the bread. Graham, and you're it. you're and so sweet, Graham. Graham, you've got us just, uh, I heard salmon yeah. and I heard some cauliflower in there, but I want Nick to quickly um, repeat what he just said. Could you do that for us, Nick? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> that was so much food in 30 seconds. I, I can't believe it. But uh, Graham, it's. I want sounds, the halibut. I'll you want the halibut? halibut? Did I hear halibut? Big, it was a- <laughs> big old halibut. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take all of the above. Three, three. <laughs> all of the above. Good answer. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah, I'll all right. Take all of the above and more. Graham, so. you've that made us sufficiently delicious. starving. Could you put Jonathan on the phone? And we want to see if he can uh, yeah. daw some tea on top of all of that. Yeah, no worries. Is that okay? Thank you, Thank Graham. You, Graham. You're, We're you're, looking forward to it. Thank you. You're an angel. Thank you, Graham. Hi, Jonathan. Here. Jonathan, thank you. This is CEO of Tragathan. You are you are so amazing. I have you on the phone right now with Nick Roldan and Monty Roberts and Jonathan Jones. Hey, Jonathan, how are you? Well, really fun. I, so I read, Jonathan, that you have created a special blend of tea just for the Sunset Polo event. It is a Gatsby party. Is there something going in this Sunset Polo blend of tea? That um, you never, you know, you know what? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a little secret we have. So we're we're, we're, <laughs> we're trying we're trying to come up with a couple of ideas. So you never okay. know. Okay. Uh, well, we won't let that one out plan. of the pot. That's, okay. <laughs> that's the plan. That's the plan. So. Well, um, Nick, why did you think? Yeah, thank uh, still, Jonathan the tea, and the tea, Graham. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, look, the tea, you know, we we built up a great relationship with Jonathan. He's been. Um, him and his company and, uh, and Shugathan have been, you know, overly over, over supportive. And, you know, they came out of Florida and saw what we did and they loved the idea. And we actually came up with a Nickel Dan Sunset Tea and, um, and, uh, which was a huge hit. Um, it's a green tea based tea. Um, that's a little bit, it's, it's almost like a refreshing tea. Um, that's not as strong as green tea. And, um, you know, everyone loved it and it was a huge hit. And, you know, we've built a great relationship with Trevathan and hopefully, um, you know, they've been a huge supporter of, of myself and, you know, the Brook and, 
and uh, you know the charities that we work with, and, and for Polo as well. And um, you know, we're excited to have Jonathan on board and Andrew Goffin, and and uh, we're we're also we're interested to see what you guys think of the team. Great. Well, thank you, Graham and yeah. Jonathan, both for your huge sacrifice to help. But I know that it probably brings a lot of warmth to your heart, too. So we thank you for that. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, Jonathan. Cavallo Horse and Rider offers a wide range of innovative products that provide comfort, protection, support and value for you and your horse. Cavallo's easy-to-use, economical, and effective hoof boots are available in three styles and six sizes to fit your horse's hooves and your riding style. Cavallo's got your back, too, with their Total Comfort System saddle pads for English, Western, and Tucker saddles. Look for Cavallo's simple, sport, and trek hoof boots and saddle pads at your local tax store, or you can visit them online at cavallo-inc.com. It's time for Jamie Jennings to fetch an email from Monty Roberts' inbox and share a morsel of Monty's wisdom in a little segment we like to call Ask Monty. Leave this world a better place than mine. The magic in the language of the herd. Dear Monty, what should I look for when buying a horse for the first time? Monty's answer. This project has many facets and most of them are critically important if you are to have a positive experience. I go into all these matters in great detail in the educational resources listed in the recommended additional resources section at the back of the book. So here, we'll just mention a few of the factors you will need to consider. I take into consideration the financial aspects, not just of buying the horse, but also of keeping it, as well as the kind of horse one might want and matching the horse to one's own level of skill and experience. Safety is a factor that I stress throughout any advice I give on purchasing a horse. After safety comes health and soundness, the time needed to devote to the horse, and whether or not that time is available. Stabling and who will care for the horse are important. I even go into waste disposal, something that most people forget. In the process of selecting a horse, it is critical to engage the assistance of a veterinarian who specializes in your chosen field. A professional horse person of long-standing good character can be helpful in keeping one from buying the wrong horse. I even recommend a farrier be called in for a quick assessment of the feet and what will be required to keep them right. Please do not simply accept these few important tips as sufficient guidance to prepare you for the purchase of a horse. I have gone into the whole subject in far greater detail in other published work, and it is critically important that you give the proper project consideration before you go ahead. Failing to do a good job of preparing yourself for the purchase of a horse will almost certainly result in a less than perfect outcome. For more of these insights into good horsemanship, Go to www.montyroberts.com and click on the orange banner that says, Get Free Horse Tips. Hi, I'm Monty Roberts, and I'm dedicated to training horses without pain. You can learn to do it, too, on my Equus Online University. Western, English, the beginner, or the advanced rider, it doesn't matter. You can connect with other students online, too, on our forum... And there's a new lesson every week. It's a lifetime of learning for you on my Equus Online University at MontyRoberts.com. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? Where in the world is Monty Roberts? Monty is looking forward to meeting some new friends, two-legged and four-legged. June 20th, there's a charity demonstration we've been talking about in the UK where Monty will demonstrate his Horses and Healing program for veterans with post-traumatic stress. And then he jumps over to Austria, but that's a big secret, and we'll be telling you more about that afterward. July 10 through 21 will be his Gentling Wild Horses course back in California. 
And then July 31st to August 4th is the Monty Special Training, our annual special training with Monty, where everybody, every level gets to come. And there's also a translation in Portuguese for our Brazilian friends. There we go. And I cannot recommend enough the gentle wild, Gentling Wild Horses Clinic that you guys do because there are so many people out there. I've always wanted to have a Mustang and I don't know yeah. where to start. Or yes. I've always wanted to have a Mustang, but I've never worked with an untouched horse before. This is okay. such an enormous and wonderful investment before you Absolutely. get your first Mustang. And, and people who rescue horses, too, Absolutely. you know, that have come out of trauma or, or you know, hoarding situations or whatever, and they just haven't been gentled yet, um, being safe and Super confident impressive. around those horses. Yeah. Safe Super. and confident. Safe for them, mm -hmm. safe for you, confident and getting those horses out um, into the world in responsible ownership situations with yeah. their the absolute best chance at success. So got to do it. Uh, you can find out more at MontyRoberts.com. Or you can get Monty's calendar by giving him a call. That's right. You can call folks over there at Flag, uh, Flag Is Up Farms. The phone number there is 805-688-6288. And if you want information about today's show, you can go to the website, horsemanshipradio.com, and we'll have links to our guests, some pictures, and more information. And as always, we love your feedback. Tell us about your first Mustang. Woohoo! You can yeah. follow Monty Roberts on <laughs> Facebook. Just search Monty Roberts. Or you can tweet Monty Roberts on Twitter. His handle is Monty underscore Roberts. And don't miss any shows. Get the Horse Radio Network app for your iPhone or Android. It's free and easy to use. Just go to your, your app store and search Horse Radio Network. That's right. There's so much up there. There's no excuse to waste time anymore. You could be feeding your head all day long with all the shows. They're great. It's true. I do. I do. Many thanks to our sponsors, too. Omega Fields, our new title sponsor, Cavallo Horse and Rider, and Monty's Equus Online University. Be sure to visit all the other great shows, too, on the Horse Radio Network at www.horseradionetwork.com. But until next time, have many happy horse hours. <laughs>